um, it's a quick research uh, that we did on the e-learning practices and challenges in the engineering education. Uh, we were looking at the Omani perspective, as I told you in my previous presentation, that in Oman, when this uh, challenge came up of uh, the normal or the conventional uh, education uh, suspension, we were asked to move on to the e-learning for which uh, most of the country was not prepared. So the uh, quick overview of the presentation that I'm going to talk about, introduction, pre and post COVID teaching and learning environment, e-learning practices and challenges, research team, and then I'll find you talk about the results and discussion. So, uh, okay, the uh, COVID-19 crisis, uh, it had uh, unprecedented, unprecedented uh, impact on the academia. Uh, this was the sector that was mostly hurt and most of the countries or most of the regions in the world, they never wanted to stop the education process because it's not only the education, it's the, uh, it's the time uh, it would go waste. It's the students who would uh, lose their time and so on. So there were different things that were there. So uh, when this transformation was done, most of the institutions were not ready, especially uh, when I talk about the, the perspective of Oman, uh, it was not ready. So uh, in the initial phase, most of the uh, teachers and learners, they were actually prepared for uh, transforming from conventional face-to-face -face, uh, program delivery to e-learning program delivery. Uh, the, and, and, and the transformation was so fast that we had to go for the transformation as well as preparation for the e-learning uh, contents as well. So this actually provided an opportunity to the uh, academia, but uh, as you know, that nothing comes free. So we had difficult times. Uh, if we quickly look at the face-to-face -face, uh, or the conventional uh, learning process, there are two types of approaches that are used, teacher-centered approach and the student-centered approach. Uh, most of the world is now uh, actually using the student-centered approach, but the this new environment or that that came up or the 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 covid environment that came up or the post covid environment that came up uh, this the teacher centered approach or the student centered approach both were actually hanging on the fulcrum of the technology technology centered approach it was 100% dependence on the technology rather than any other approaches that we could use at that time so there is a famous uh, model, learning model that has, that has been presented by Dr. Rubin. He, said, he says that there are four phases of uh, the transformation from a face-to-face -face, uh, learning to the e-learning environment or online learning environment. It's called as SAMR model, which is uh, talks about substitution. First of all, what we do is we substitute whatever contents we have into a digital format. Then we augment it, try to enhance it. So this is an enhancement part of the, the model and then comes out to be then the next ones are the modification and redefinition. So we modify the things that we have according to the new environment, and then we redef redefine so many things that are related to the assessments, and then try to evaluate the things and finalize the, the complete model. So when COVID it struck in Oman, uh, it was actually just like any other part of the world, a critical health emergency. So we had to stop the face-to-face uh, -face delivery with immediate effect. So uh, different precautionary measures were taken by the government. So in order to stop the crowd gathering, uh, we went completely online from March 2020. To be very precise, from 12th March 2020. So all the educational institutions in Oman, they went online and they started their uh, e-learning programs. So after a conventional and in-person um, method postponement, we had no other choices. So. Uh, we wanted to actually familiarize our staff and, and, and teach and, and learners for the new e-learning environment and we were short in time. So administrations in the higher education institutions, uh, they promptly responded to this uh, government requirement. And uh, as uh, I already mentioned that there are only two public sector universities. So there was one public sector university, which is the biggest university in the country, Sultan Kabush University. They had some experience as far as e-learning uh, delivery was concerned, but no other institution in the country was ready to that level. So 
uh, the for majority of the institution it was a new experience so we had to educate and familiarize the staff as well as the students in order to cope up with this particular thing and the the, the main thing that hurt the country was the infrastructure which was not ready so uh, on, on one side we were transforming or substituting the contents or actually augmenting the content from the conventional delivery to an e-learning uh, delivery and on the other hand it was the infrastructure that was to be developed and lot of investment to be done in the in the it infrastructure so that we can cope up with this requirement uh, the research that was uh, actually conducted uh, the, the method that was used had the quantitative as well as qualitative uh, input in it so we use this to determine the challenges that we faced and the opportunities that were available through the e-learning uh, environment. Uh, the, there were three phases of this particular uh, research. So we, we selected a range of participants uh, through sur for survey and interviews. We collected the data through question eyes and, and interviews, and interviews and, and we also obtained, obtained some, some data, data. Uh, uh, which was later on uh, an, an analyzed on the SPSS software, the famous software for statistical analysis. The participants that were there, we tried to have a, a mix, uh, actually, uh, party, participants, party, participants, so that we have, so that uh, we have uh, a presentation, presentation from, from, the, from, 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 from the genders. genders, from the genders. genders. We had the presentation from the expat as well as the local nationals, and then all uh, group of ages were also involved in this. So this was the selection of the participants, and we had uh, something like more than three hundred participants that took part in this particular um, uh, surveys and questionnaire sessions. The quantitative survey results that 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 we uh, analyzed, we found out that there were. Uh, um, the, the major uh, problem that we had, the major challenges that we have, I've just listed, listed on this uh, view foil. Uh, there are others also which were actually uh, had very less value in it. So the major problem that we faced was, as I said, the technology, the broadband issue. And then the next one was the place of study uh, because of the family sizes in, in, the, in the country. So uh, most of the students, they actually claim, uh, they complained that they did not have the quiet place of study available for all the uh, young uh, family members in, in, in their household. Health and psychological issues, uh, we had problems with lack of communication and then the lack of resources. These were the major things that, that, that we had. So uh, the, the only thing that was different was, it was interesting that we had about 14% of the participants uh, they were talking about the calm place, non-availability of the calm place at their uh, homes. Uh, the qualitative survey results uh, pointed out some key findings. It, it came up an idea about, gave an idea about the learner's motivation, which was the main thing, the learner's concentration, uh, the lack of practical classes, the pedagogy or the, the teaching techniques. Uh, the technology awareness and the assessment tool. So these were the six main key findings that we had from our, our, our survey results. Uh, so people gave their comments in these areas. The lessons that we learned from this particular uh, exercise that we had, uh, that the Sultanate of Oman was forced to uh, actually teach online and it, it, it taught us that we should now be ready for this kind of eventuality. If it hits again in, in future, we should be prepared for these kind of things. Uh, the faculty members, learners, and their parents, they faced basically a challenge with respect to the availability of the resources, uh, the, 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 mainly the technology, the computers, signal problems. Uh, so the, in, in all parts of the Sultanate, uh, internet was not equally available, so students had to move from place to place in order to get good signals and stay in contact with their institutions and with their teachers and to attend the lessons. Uh, it was a big pressure on all the stakeholders, may it be teachers, may it be learners or their parents, so everybody had pressure on them. Many faculty members and students, uh, because they had never been, never used this kind of uh, medium before, so when this medium became the formal learning medium, uh, it took them time to uh, actually get conversant with this. From a money perspective, it was observed that learners found doing other tasks while listening to teachers and generally avoided discussions. 
uh, like uh, some of the students, they were joining with their uh, mobiles, uh, with other devices that they had. And when they were asked to move on to certain slides, or go on to certain software or things like this in the class, they were unable to do that. So they were doing their own things as well as listening to the, to the instruction. So this was uh, related to the concentration and the motivation of the students because they were at their own, they were doing it at their own convenience. So this was the biggest uh, problem that we had. So the objectives of the Bloom's taxonomy, uh, like there are uh, in the cognitive domain, there were these six things that were to be actually looked at and we tried to cater for all of them, but uh, there was always some kind of problems in, in, in some of the phases and we lagged there. Uh, so if I go to the future of e-learning, that, that how we see this in, in the Omani perspective is, Actually, it was a challenge, but every challenge uh, brings a new opportunity. So this particular thing was, a, it, it came as a motivating factor uh, for the staff uh, and as, as well as for the, for, the, for the learners to learn something new and the staff got fully engaged into converting all their uh, information into the digital format so that it is readily available uh, all over the time. Uh, it provided a chance for the teachers and learners to adopt this state-of-the-art technology. Uh, we thought or we think that the institutions uh, should give top priority to build capacity for teacher as well as learner in the, in, in the normal time so that they can, come, they can cope up with this kind of uh, eventuality. So the continuous uh, professional development should always be given due importance in this particular part so that we can we can, we can prepare our staff as well as the students uh, to reach last person in the queue. We should work, we should look at different technologies. Uh, this is with respect to the Umani perspective. As I said, that the, the technology was a bigger problem uh, to reach the students in, in far areas uh, of, of the Sultanate. Uh, the crisis that, that we had it, uh, actually highlighted the need for more flexibility, and then we had to develop more and more uh, confidence on our uh, assessments. There, there, can be a, there can be a method of having a continuous assessment, formative assessment, summative assessments, and other things that can actually develop or build our, conf our confidence on the assessments that are taking place. Otherwise, uh, the assessments would not be the true reflective of the student's achievement. Uh, it invoked the need for innovate, innovative solutions uh, that are appropriate to address each context and not to leave, so that we don't leave anybody behind. Uh, all these students are kept along in the way. So uh, if after the first semester that, was, that went online, we moved on to the blended learning uh, as the COVID environment became a little relaxed. So the, the government uh, allowed the institutions to have the blended learning. The students were uh, actually called on campus for a limited period of time in a limited numbers so that they, they can go ahead with some kind of practical uh, work that they were required to do and do some lab work. Uh, so this uh, was declared as a blended learning where we have the content of uh, online delivery as well as the in-person delivery or the practical work was done on campus along with the assessments that took place uh, on campus. So for this, we had to define the new norms uh, for the future engineering education. So that's all from my side. If you have any question in this regard, I'm here to answer your questions. Thank okay. you very much.